Hello students, Logan Phillips here. Uh, this is an Excel walkthrough number one. This is our first of our lecture series of the Microsoft Excel environment. Now this first lecture is going to be just an introduction, an overview of Excel, like how it's laid out, where you can find certain items. So let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Excel. Now to accomplish this task, I'm running Windows 10, uh, so I can either start on the start menu and go in through my all apps and I can find Microsoft Excel, which takes a minute, uh, let's see, it takes forever. Uh, there it goes, Excel 2016, and I can click on it and open it up. The other choice is I can start on my start menu and just type in the word Excel. And it's going to bring me straight to that particular app. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what the Microsoft environment looks like for Excel 2016. Now, inside 2016, we're going to have a few different pieces that open up immediately upon first start. On the top or the left hand side, you're going to find your recent documents. On the right hand side, you're going to find the Microsoft Excel templates. Now, the templates are always pieces that are designed and built by the Microsoft Corporation to do the variety of tasks that people typically do with inside, inside Microsoft Excel. Now, Excel has been around for over 30 years, and it is the number one business application utilized in vocational industries uh, across the board. If you're doing anything, uh, finance, customer base, uh, representatives, uh, any kind of database management, more than likely if it's small, you're going to be using Microsoft Excel. And because they've been around so long, their templates are extremely, extremely good. Now, you can also go online and find useful templates from different places online. Uh, if you choose to do that, I would suggest being careful as the Microsoft Excel templates can have viruses if you find them from untrustworthy websites. Now, I'm going to choose to just open up a blank work workbook and start and see what the environment looks like inside Excel. So let's choose a blank workbook. Now, Excel is always arranged in the same way. We have columns that run from top to bottom, and we have rows that run from left to right. And Excel is infinite. So it starts with a cell where a column and a row meet, and we have cell A1. And you can always tell exactly what cell you're on because it will be named inside the name box. So here the cell A1 is highlighted in green, and it's named A1 inside the A1 box. Now the name box is not just a descriptor. You can actually also jump to different cells. So let's go to cell C12. And you can see it'll take you exactly to the particular cell that you're wanting to do. So we have rows, left to right, columns, top to bottom, and where a row and a column meet, we have an individual cell, and the names of them always start with the name of the column, followed by the name of the row. Now, Excel is laid out in a ribbon just like Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Access, and all the other Microsoft suites, Outlook, um, OneNote, everything. Now, the ribbon has tabs on the top. We have the File tab, which takes us to the Backstage view. We have the Home tab, which is your most common pieces that you use. And we have a variety of other tabs, Insert, Page Layout, Formulas, Data, Review, View, add-ons <clears throat> and if you're doing more advanced stuff you can have advanced tabs that might be or might not be open like the developers tab now inside of each of the tabs is groups and so we have here like the group of clipboard group or the font group on the home tab on the home tab the alignment group and inside we have each tab is different groups so page layout tab page setup group and inside each of the groups, we have what's called a dialog box launcher. So if I'm on the page layout tab in the page setup group, I have in the bottom right hand corner a page setup dialog box launcher that will give me more advanced options across the board. These are how you take you to the next level from that very introductory user to an advanced user that I'd say 50 to 60% of other people don't know how or don't even know that this particular button exists. So if nothing else, you've learned about the dialog box launcher and you're more advanced than an average user. So remember, tabs, groups, dialog box launcher, the little down arrow radio button. <clears throat> now, Microsoft Excel has a variety of things you can do inside of it. You can either manage text, you can manage data, or you can work with formulas, mathematical equations that allow you to do advanced calculations or even simple calculations. So in, inside every single cell, you can deal with particular things. So in cell A1, I can come up here to what is called the formula bar. 
and I have here next to the formula bar an insert function button. And so I can insert a variety of functions like adding, counting, uh, if functions, and we'll go through each of these individual functions on small little tidbit videos. But I'm gonna do a sum function here. Now all of our functions are designed the same way. We have a range and we have the equation. So we have an equal sign starts all functions and that tells Microsoft that I am going to be doing some mathematics. And after the equal sign, we have what type of mathematics it's going to be doing. Uh, here we're going to add. And then we have what we're going to be adding or where the area that we're going to be adding is. So I can put in, we're going to do a sum of A1 through A5. And I can't do A1 because I'm already in A1. So let's do A2 through A5. And notice as I type in, my numbers change up top. So we have ability to put in text, we have the ability to put in numbers, or we have the ability to enter in things like an equal sign and put in different types of functions. All right, so you can enter a variety of things. Now once these numbers are in, you can also modify how they look. So right now we have 25 here and it's just considered a general number. In the home tab in the numbers group, we can actually change this to a variety of things from numbers to currency to accounting, even to dates. I know some of you have always tried to put in like a 12, 12, 15, like a date. And sometimes it comes out looking like a date. Sometimes it comes out looking like some gibberish. I put in 12, 12, 15, I get 42, 30, 50, 0. Makes no sense. That's because the number style is wrong. You wanna make sure you're putting in the correct number style to get the actual information you want. Excel is very good at guessing, but it's not always correct. Now, for the environment itself, we also have ability to see uh, the workbook in a couple different ways. So inside of Excel, we have what's considered a workbook. Now, all of our Microsoft suites are built off old ideas. So here I have a record keeping book uh, for my attendance. You know, this is, whole thing is a workbook. Now, each one of the pages is a worksheet inside the workbook. This is the old style paper method. So inside Microsoft Excel, we had the same idea. Everything inside of it is a workbook, and each of the individual pieces is worksheets. And we can have as many worksheets as we need. And so down here in the bottom left-hand corner, we can see we're on worksheet one. But we can add worksheets, worksheet two, worksheet three, worksheet four, until we have as many worksheets as we want. We can also rearrange these by dragging and dropping them to different places by left clicking my mouse button. On the bottom right hand corner we have different ways that we can view this. Now I'm viewing it as an infinite screen but maybe I want to view it as exactly how it's going to be printed. So I can go to page layout here. And I can see where my margins are, I can see what's going to be printed on what different pages, I can also see headers and footers. So this makes it look a little bit more like that Microsoft Word environment. I can also see it on page break view, which allows me to see multiple pages just exactly where things are breaking and separating. Now typically you're going to be working here inside the normal view, but if you need to know those are here. If you have an extensive page and Let's see, let's just go ahead and well, I'm going to extend this out. And you're wanting to see the numbers and you're following through here and you're thinking, man, I need to see all these. We actually have a zoom feature on the bottom right hand corner where we can zoom in or out to see all the data, some of the data or how it's laid out. All right, let's see. Okay, let's go through the tabs at top. So the home tab has some specific groupings. Now the font grouping is how you modify how things look. So I'm gonna zoom back in here on the bottom right. I'm gonna choose a random number. The 70 right here seems important. So let's, let's go ahead and make it bold, fill it with yellow, turn the font red, and increase the font size. So just like in Microsoft Word, you have your font controls that control how things look. Now, unlike Microsoft Word, these font controls control either a single cell that you've selected or a range of cells that you have selected. So it works on the individual cell instead of just the whole page or just the text you've selected. The alignment group is put your text from either right, left, um, or center, just like Word. 
but it also has a top, middle, or bottom. So you can run it top and left, or middle and left, or however you need to do it to align your text inside the, the margins of an individual cell. So let's take this 13. I want to put it in the middle, and I want to put it in the middle, middle. So if I was to extend out this column, my 13 is in my middle, middle. Now I could also put it to left top, bottom right. I can line my text anywhere in a given size cell. So my alignment, again, just like the font, works inside individual cells or a group of selected cells instead of just the um, whole page. Now we also can merge cells together or delete those into one mega cell or we can delete and do other things with them. Now I've already told you what the numbers are. They change the format of pieces and give things like dollars, uh, can change it to currency, can change it to time, percentages, all those pieces. The styles allows you to conditionally format pieces, uh, do quick styles that are commonly used. Excuse me. Sorry, I had to sneeze. <clears throat> all right, so our styles allow us to do quick styles that are commonly used, things such as the uh, double bottom, the uh, link cell inputs, and they're going to give you a sort of a comment on exactly what they are. Now, you can always hover on top of any given cell, and it will tell you its name. So if you see something you don't quite know what it is, you can always just hover on top of it with your mouse and learn its name. Now, the insert table allows us to, our insert tab allows us to do an insertion of a variety of things. We can insert word art, we can insert other documents, we can insert other spreadsheets, we can link to access databases, we can insert pictures, we can insert video, we can insert anything you want. But that's all accomplished here on the insert tab. Now, when you get a little more advanced, we're going to get into pivot tables, but these are extremely valuable items that you really should be looking at. And of course, you can always insert add-ins, uh, which you can get from the Microsoft Store. And there's charts and spark lines and things that make it more visually appealing. So if you're trying to insert things, the Insert tab is where you accomplish it. Page layout is how you manage where things are for the printing. So if it's a top middle margin, if you want to put it in headers and footers, uh, how you're going to do a background, uh, you know, watermarks, those are all done here in the page layout. And of course, you can also choose to do themes for your pages, and which affect the color schemes, the backgrounds, it affects the uh, font colors, the font sizes, all that. These are pre-selected themes made by Microsoft. Now the formulas is for doing mathematical formulas. Sometimes you just don't quite know what formula you're going to be working with, but luckily Excel has them all built in. So if I know I'm working with finances, I can come here to financial and I can find things like, oh, I want to do my um, returns, uh, my annual duration of my returns. So I can do things like that. Or if I'm doing a logical test, I can do if and ors, I can do text test, I can do date values, lookups and references, math and trigonometry if you're working with statistics or algebra, or there's just a whole slew of more advanced ones like engineering or statistical, all those abilities. Excel is extremely advanced when it comes to doing math, so utilize it as best you can. Now the data view allows me to access information and data from other locations. For our class, you won't be getting into the data view until uh, very late. Uh, if you're in my Microsoft Excel course, if you're in my concept course, uh, you're really not going to get inside the data uh, very heavy at all. Uh, review tab, uh, just like Microsoft Word, we have a ability to check spelling and grammar, but what doesn't happen is it doesn't automatically do that. So if you're wanting to check spelling and grammar, you need to choose it specifically for what you're wanting to select. You can also put in comments and they will allow you to see comments. Now you can see in the cell I put in comment has a little red piece on the top right and so you can leave comments for documents without interrupting the data itself. And you can filter through those comments uh, through the workbook. So if you're sharing back and forth and collaborating uh, you can do it from here. And of course you can actually share your workbooks. Uh, you can send it out and share it through email. You can put it onto your OneDrives and use live document updating. Uh, you can share it a variety of ways. Now view just changes how things look when you're viewing them. Uh, again, normal view, page layout, page break, all those type items. You can choose to see your rulers, choose to not see your rulers. And add-ins are 
actual additional content from other providers. So I have like Adobe Contribute, I have can publish this to a web page or to a blog. Uh, these are additional abilities I have that I've purchased or downloaded from the uh, bookstore or the Microsoft store. All right, so the big pieces of Microsoft Excel that you need to know about. It is aligned in a grid of columns and rows. It has a ribbon up top, which is a tabbed ribbon. Uh, the file is called Backstage View. And then each of the tabs at home <clears throat> will give you groupings on the ribbon, like the clipboard group. And inside each of the groups, you have things like a dialog box launcher. And of course, in the bottom right-hand corner, we have Zoom and Minimize. And we have how many pages, and it's aligned in a complete workbook. And inside the workbook are individual worksheets. Again, this is just like having a notebook with financial documents inside of it. Of course, this is an empty financial document, so don't think you're going to get my bank accounts. <laughs> but instead of having to do it pencil and paper method, which everyone did for millions of years or however long we've been doing accounting, you can now do it digitally. All right, guys, that is Microsoft Excel, a quick overview. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Bye, guys.